In this video, we're going to cover a subject that's kind of close to my heart, which is making the use of hash tables. Now, I'm going to ask the question, first of all, what is a hash table and how is it useful beyond something like variables? So let's start with a very simple example of this. Uh, I'm going to create a hash table, which is very similar to how you create a regular variable. Um, you happily give it a name, you get an equals, and then you use an at sign and the curly brackets to enclose. So then you have a value, and then the value equals, and then you can have multiple values. This makes it quite easy to read out how your table is structured. So you can have multiple values within one table instead of having an individual value in each and every uh, row. So here I've just created a table and I'm going to show you how that table looks compared with a value. So if I just show you the hash table, you can see we have name and value. Now, if I compare that with something like a simple variable where you would normally have uh, a value and only a value. So let's just take the value Earth as an example and show you how that looks compared with our hash table where we have a name and a value. It does help if I actually fill the value, my bad. So as you can see, we have just Earth as the output. There is no name value. So we have limited uh, options within our simple variable. So let's see how else we might use this. Now another key thing about hash tables is other than the fact that they do not give the same output as variables, they also don't respond in the same way. So I'll give you an example. So I'm just going to create a for loop which is going to go through all of the values, add it into a single uh, variable and then we're going to print that variable out to show the contents of it, right? Seems simple enough. Just get all the values from the hash table, print them into our uh, clear vo uh, variable, which you can see I've put up there with an empty value. So it's, it's good when you have loops to make sure that you empty out the values just in case. Um, in this case, we're now going to go with the clean, we're going to go plus equals, and we're going to get the value i. Um, since we already know that we have both a name and a value, I'm going to get it to give me the name and the value. Um, because of this, we need to encapsulate, because we're going for a substring of the value. Um, and then we're going to do the same to get the value. So we, we had previously the name, and now we're just going to get the, the value and then finally we're going to close this off and we're going to simply print the output of our variable called clean. Now what you're about to see is what I refer to as one of the tricky substances to do with hash tables which is how it outputs or as you're about to see how it doesn't. So. Here you can say, okay, maybe I've made a typo, right? Well, I'll tell you first of all, I haven't. See, the thing is, the, there are very few uh, examples of this out there, but if you use tables in this way, you actually need to add a little parameter onto the end, and then you'll get the result that you're looking for. Now, I have just made a typo because I've added one extra um, encapsulation here, so let me just get rid of the spare one and run that again. And now you can see the output is what we would expect to see. Uh, as per the previous lines, I have the city, then the city, and then planet, and then Earth, and so on and so forth. So we were able to access it. Now, what are some of the other uses for a hash table? Well, hash tables, apart from being used in loops like this, they can also be used with the thing called splatter. So you can create a table that contains all the values you need and then just blast it into a command line. So here's an example of how you would do that with the DHCP scope. So instead of having a really long command, you just have a simple at and then the 
name of the hash table and all of that information with the relative types will get entered for you. So that's one example. The other example we can use uh, installation information and then print it to a single line by killer capturing it into our variable. This obviously is a lot easier to read and therefore makes it a lot easier to work with as a human when you're modifying scripts instead of really really long command lines. Now hopefully this gives you an example of some of the value that hash tables can provide and that sums up our session for today. If you like this video give us a thumbs up, if you didn't give it a thumbs down and subscribe for more content.